TC here with another review for you. Uh, today we're going to look at the British Tier 10 uh, medium tank. Uh, this is the Centurion AX. Recently introduced into the game, um, some, just near the start of the year, as a replacement for the old FE42 or 2. And for me and a lot of other players, it addressed some major issues that we had with the British Tier 10 medium. Notably, it wasn't particularly fast. Um, and it didn't really, it didn't keep up with the other mediums, and you always felt quite hampered by the low top speed. Um, none of that really applies with the AX. It feels fast. It feels mobile. It feels like a tank possessed, um, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I've not actually aced it yet either. So the replay we've had is only my second class game, um, but it's a game I enjoy playing, and I played it yesterday on my 300. Uh, my 300 follower Twitch celebration stream. Um, hopefully we can grow the YouTube channel to be as big as that as well and they can level peg with each other. Here's hoping, hey guys. Um, so, uh, the AX has a really, really nice gun. It's a 105 uh, L7A2. It's 0.32 accuracy. Um, it aims like a fly. Uh, it, you know, it, it's a laser pointer of a gun. It's fantastic. It aims and it shoots really nicely. Uh, it does a decent amount of damage, and with a rate with a reload of just over eight seconds without BIA currently, it's actually really competitive as well. So it's not too bad either. You got a decent slug of armor around it, and as you can see, it slopes and rounded. But be warned that this area above the gun mantle here can be overmatched and penetrated quite easily with some large caliber guns. So just be wary of that. The tank is designed to go hold down, and he's got a really, really nice, uh, really good gun depression. Um, so, you know, definitely consider it. The gun depression there at minus ten is just, you know, ridge lines are where this thing works best because then basically people are shooting up, and this becomes a more bounceable zone. Um, I run it with my usual V stab, uh, the optics and vents. There would be there is an argument to put a, a rammer on it instead of the optics, but with 486 meters view range, this is one of my more this is one of the longer view range tanks I actually have in the garage, so I'm a bit reluctant to lose my view range um, for a slightly quicker rate of fire. When uh, to be fair, the rate of fire is perfectly acceptable to myself. A couple of things they changed when they put when they when they changed this in was they also changed the ammunition that you could load. Previously, you could only run APCR premium hash and non-premium hash. Now with the changes we finally get a competitive premium ammunition shell in the form of the heat shell. Um, yep it's heat, yep it bounces quite easily unless it hits a flat surface, however doesn't matter. It's a more competitive shell than the hash shells that we, would get, that we had previously with the 42 or 2P and it makes a world of difference. Um, large repair kit, large med kit, automatic fire extinguisher, they go without saying. Ammunition, I carry quite a lot of APCR because it does have a really meaty penetration with a standard of about 268 um, and 330 with the premium heat shell should you decide to do that. So for a change we have better premium pen than before um, and yeah, it's just overall it's just a lot more enjoyable to play now with the, with this, with this in this tank. The crew, uh, as you can see, not particularly well skilled, not particularly well thought out. This is one of the first tier tens I got, so the crew is very all over the show. We've got the basics of six cents recon. We're working on BIA now. Uh, you know, dead eye, snapshot, um, clutch braking, smooth ride, uh, and safe stowage, and situational awareness. The loader is also the radio operator, so you know we need to build up his skills as well. Um, Means it's a lot of means it's you know it's starting to become it's starting to come alive this tank it's starting to play a lot more fun um, top speed 53 kph it really gets up a motors now before that's a good 13 kph quicker than your previous tier 10 the FV 42 or two which was pegged at 40 kph and it felt painful you just had to watch the other mediums the 50m the leopard the bat chat the Object 140, the 62A, the 430. You just have to sit back and watch them stream away. Even 50Bs and IS7s, you just you, you couldn't do. You just have to sit back and just watch them pull away from you and just play a very very passive supporting role. It you felt 
you felt so crippled. Um, but, you know, that's all changed now. Uh, now we can run with the front of the pack. Uh, you know, we've got the mobility, we've got the turret traverse, 48 degrees, 50 degree hull traverse as well, so it dances and darts. It's now a joy to play, uh, and it's, it is fast becoming one of mine, if not my favourite tank, uh, at tier 10. It, there's a lot of competitive tier 10 to play out there, but for me this is this is becoming to be the sweet spot, and uh, I don't play it very often, but when I do, I I always have a smile on my face. It's you know, it's always nice to, to play this tank. Uh, review. Um, any downsides to it? No, it doesn't have much armor. 120 at the front's not bad, and the sloping's pretty good. So once you get it hull down, uh, you hide your lower plate. It can bounce some shells, but you just have to be careful. Obviously, at tier 10, you've got super high penetration guns, so it's not always going to be givens. Um, the benefits, I think, definitely are the view range on this tank. You know, you're getting on for nearly 500 meters. You're getting on for nearly for 486 meters view range here. Okay. You're way over the 445 hard cut limit, which means you are countering camo more and more and more and more and more. So it's only good things can come from that. Um, and it, you know, it's a stark contrast to the 71, which is still a slug of a tank. Um, it does. The 71 is a very good tank. Don't get me wrong, but it still feels very much of a slug of a tank. So, but this is my this is my preferred choice of tank. Um, to go forward with now. So, we're going to have a look at the replay. Um, uh, this is a platoon with Angry Scott and GJ uh, from Philo. Two really good friends of mine, also really good live streamers as well. Uh, and GJ has a YouTube channel which you'll see attached to my channel as well. So if you if you haven't, go and give him a, go and give him, go and check him out. He's quite he's quite a good guy. So, let's see what the replay. Is. Okay guys, here we go. As we can see, uh, we're on the airfield map in the Centurion AX. It's a three-man Centurion AX platoon. I'll speed up the replay a bit to get in. Um, as you can see, there's myself, Angry Scott, and GJ in our AXs. Uh, we're on the step on the airfield map. Um, we're obviously on voice comms as well, um, so we're going to knock it down to standard speed. Um, straight away, we decide that pretty much. Barring the T22, the STB and the opposition, uh, we feel the best opportunity for us is to really take control of this south area. Uh, it's where medium tanks should go, and that's what we decide in. Scott indicates that he want that there's going to be something in E5 for the team, uh, which is pretty much a given. Um, I take the I take the choice to be really aggressive and push really hard south here. Now, previously with the FV42 or two, you'd never do this. A bit of auto aim use here on the uh, CDC, uh, using the really good gun depression and elevation over the back of the tank, and land a nice shell into the CDC there. Scott follows it up with another hit, another shot into the CDC there. So we, you know, we're racking the damage up here, bouncing the E50 shell there. We lose our track. We burn the repair kit to get us back out of get us back out of that fire. We take the CDC out, and the 1390 falls to GJ. Looking for a shot on the T22 med, and at that point we bounce the H the heat shell from the E100 there. He's casually just chilling there, shot into his lower plate there. Um, as you can see, the heat shell probably hit the sloped and rounded turret. We're just under two. We're just we're just coming into the second minute of this game. We're already three nil up. Um, really wrecking face here. I've got a kill. You know, GJ's got a couple of kills. Pushing forward on the Wizzy 120 here, um, he seems fixated on uh, a different tank. First track goes through his driveway and tracks him in place. We we bounce and we take another heat shell from the U100 in the rear this time. It sets us on fire and that wrecks our uh, that wrecks our automatic fire extinguisher. I'm now I'm now going to sit in this location here, just with the turret showing, and taking shots at range. Good shell into the Panther 88 there for a draw of 413. It's a 2.1 KO damage. We bounce his return. E50M try to get shots onto us as well. We fire another shot blind there. 
Mm, could have hit the E50M, I don't know. I'm looking for a kill shot here on the Panther. Fire another one blind into that location. There's a lot of tanks there. Um, you know, there's a lot of... Th you know, we are really, we're comfortably leading this game already. Um, still looking for shots on these medium tanks. Uh, nothing yet available. It's at this point that uh, GJ starts yelling for help against the E4. Um, and I suddenly realise that I can be in a position to assist him here, so I pop up. He turns his flank to us, so we put a nice shell into him to start the damage on him. GJ starts trying to circle him. Um, I, it's at this point I realise that Scott's actually behind me, because I, I do wonder why I'm being jostled out of position. Um, bounce the T22 shot. And as you can see, this thing, once you get it hauled down, he's bouncing. Suddenly realise that Scott's there. Um, bit of banter on comms at this point on the live stream, basically saying, "Oh, you, you, you're pushing the scrub lord out, are you? You, you, you take, you're nicking my spot there." So straight away, I've got to push forward. I've got to find location. There's not enough space behind that for both of us. So I make the decision. I'm pushing forward. Platoon's doing real. Platoon's doing really well. We're really racking the damage up. E fifty's looking at G looking at GJ here and he's he's saying help, help. So yeah, no problem. Coming round. I've got him. I'm coming round. We come round and we plant a shell straight into the back of the E fifty M. Puts him on four sixty hit points. Gentle ram we, we take more damage than we should have done, but you know, hey, reasons. Take out the E fifty there, puts us on three point four K of known damage. T22 med shoots me in the rear. I pop back to see if I can get a shot into him, but he's a little bit too quick and manoeuvres away. We miss, we miss, but GJ pushes forward, shuts him down. And now we're in a race to see who can get to these mediums and get some, get these to these heavies and get some more damage off. Myself and GJ are pushing around here. Uh, you know we've we've got our our little T54 lightweight is harassing the Jaeger there with the Death Star. Scott's shooting the Death Star because the Jaeger doesn't appear to be any danger to him. However, when Scott pushes his head around the corner, he suddenly realizes that yep, there's a Jaeger there. He's firing heat at me. I miss the first shell. Uh, really annoying there. Wait for the reload. Looking for a shot into the back doors of the Jaeger. I fire. Um, it's at this point where GJ suddenly realizes that that's the back of the Jaeger. It's not the front of the Jaeger. Uh, he should have shot it. He misses. Scott's running. Uh, we survived the game there as a team. So I'm on 3.8k of spotted damage. Um, you know, the, as a platoon, that was a real good hit and run game. Just over five and a half minutes gameplay there. We'll go to post game results now. Yes, here's the post game results for that for that Centurion AX game. As you can see, it's only a second class mastery, but we do get the spotter badge, the hand of God, the bruiser, the shell proof, and the fire for effect. We don't get any special awards. Uh, we did land a good. We did land a shell onto the T22 medium, and we appear to take out his track of some description there, because we do get some assistance damage. We put a shell into the Jaeger, three shots into the AMX CDC, one into the E100, three shots into the E50. So one of our blind shots did actually hit him. Uh, one into the Panther, one into the 120, and one into the E4. Total damage done there for myself was 4.1k of damage. Angry Scott managed to get an extra shot in above us and came out with 4.5. So with top two damage on the team there, even with a TVP on the team. Really good showing there from our tier from, from the medium tanks. In terms of XP, um, all three of us are comfortably in the top five for XP earned there. On our detail report, as you can see, we fired 16 of which 14 hit and only 11 penetrated, but we did do 4,183 damage, so a couple of our blind shots did actually hit the target. Um, we took 10 shots in return, 3 pen, but 7 bounce, so we did actually block 2.8k of damage on this tank as well. Like I said, if you can get it in the right location, the armour profile does work really nicely and you are able to bounce some nice shells. Uh, and because of tracking shots and things like that, we're able to get good assistance for our team of 1,463. Um, even on the victory though, due mainly due in no small part to the fact that we used our large repair kit and our large and our large automatic fire extinguisher, we did lose credits. Um, had we not, had we had those in stock, uh, and had we uh, not lost them, we would have made money on this 
on this game. I'm fairly confident of that. As you can see, we we were only 16k under. Had we not had we had those two in stock, we would have been well within, and we would have probably turned a healthy 36k profit for that game. Um, it's one of the reasons why you should always have those things in stock if possible. And wargaming give them away quite freely. So if you get the opportunity to get some for free for doing simple win five and things like that, it's always worth doing. Anyway, that's my review of the Centurion AX. I think it's a really good tank. I re I'm, I'm really happy that Wargaming changed it, and I've, I'm, I'm getting my feet more and more in tune with this tank. Um, I have done more damage with this tank before, um, so it's I am wor I am looking to get the Ace tank again for it. But for now, this is this is one of the this is one of the more fun and enjoyable games I've had that are quite high high tempo, high paced, and hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, if you're new. Please like, subscribe, follow. We'd help. We'd love to have you in the. We'd love to have you about and uh, in, engaging in the chat below. And I'll catch you all next time, guys. Cheers.